Come on. All right. Hit the brakes, Michael. After the hill, yeah, hit him on a straight. Ha! They work! So, this week, we show you how to put this brakes on this baby. Chevelle, a Skylark, a GTO, what have you. And we're going to also show you the secrets to the BOP, Buick Oldsmobile Pontiac specific, spindles. Because they are different from the, from the Chevy version of the same exact GM spindle and how to also convert your drum spindle to a disc spindle. So there are a lot of cool things that we're gonna show you in this video, so stay tuned how to do a budget disc race swap. The swap itself costs us $239 for the kit, for the front wheels, and then a non-power master cylinder out of a 68 Camaro for another $28 plus core. Um, you're gonna need assorted fittings and all and all, but under $300 you can do the upgrade from drum to disc without ever needing to actually buy disc spindles. And they will fit under 15 inch wheels for all you that like the pro touring look, or pro street look, sorry, and like to do a lot of the drag racing with the cheap 15 inch slicks or drag radios. So keep watching. And uh, right now, currently, I'm taking out the push rod from the pedal because it's adjustable for depth. It's a pain in the butt, so yeah. So, Ooh, man, I'm getting master whatever. So this is the single master cylinder on the old up until 68. This is what Jam uses, what Ford used, all that. The push rod right here uses a copper washer and this thing to lock in here on this particular car. This isn't always the case, but uh, we're just going to reuse it because it happens to work lengthwise and lock in with the master cylinder out of a 68 Camaro. So I'm just going to thread it back in to its original location after removing, like I said, this clip and the copper washer. Trying to pull the master cylinder off the firewall without just unscrewing it is absolute nightmare. Don't even try it. So just un reach under the dash, unscrew it like I was just suffering earlier, pull the whole thing off, and then pull out the little clip and it all just comes apart. Whole thing just slides off. And then, don't try to do the springs, none of that. These two nuts and this anchor bolt and then the whole thing will just come off. If you undo the hose, then that's all you gotta do. It's a one piece assembly. See, once it's unscrewed, you can actually pull the entire assembly off. See that rusty piece right there that's kind of clean? That's the piece that goes into here on a Pontiac or a Buick and Oldsmobile. Um, Chevy will have half inch bolts right here and 5 eighths bolts here. Whereas in this case, on this old Buick, that's a half inch dash 20 and then those are 7 16 So you have the option of buying a different steering arm off a of Chevelle and a different spindle. The pair of spindles is $130 from Speedway that's but there's other places that sell them I cannot recommend or say anything bad about them they're just just saying they're available there what we'll be doing is instead of buying spindles we're gonna keep in the budget down and I'll be cutting off 0 0.610 of an inch off the top anchor bolt that is the difference between the this brake spindle and a drum brake spindle on a 66 GM a body and then I will also be sleeving the bracket, and I'll show you how to do that with the materials provided in the kit and a piece of the uh, drum hardware, which quite honestly you'll never need again. The drum hubs, those are handy, keep those, do not get rid of those. Or sell them to a friend who's going to do a Corvette swap or something. But the drum backing plates and all that, that's all worthless. However, like I said, you could use a small piece of it to sleeve this if you got a Buick, an Oldsmobile, or a Pontiac. See, this is what it looks like removed. Um, nothing spectacular. This is what the bracket is. At this point, if it was a Chevelle, uh, you would just bolt it on. However, as you can see, you need to... Sorry, let it focus. There you go. You need to sleeve that as well as this right here. The kit comes with these, see, as you can tell, this is bare metal, you don't, you can paint it, you can powder coat it, do whatever. 
but this kit doesn't do anything. Those little silver things, they're there only there to preserve the rubber. It's not really a seal, it's just something that slides along the pin. Now, one is enough to seal both sides. So of the four you have, you can use one so you could trial and error. You put it on a round, I put it on a Craftsman uh, bit driver, screwdriver kind of deal, and it was just a little bit smaller than this. And I just let it spin on the cutoff wheel. As you can see, it's kind of beveled a little bit because of that until it came down. See, it slips right over the 7 16th nut. What you're trying to do is let it spin until it fits inside that hole right there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to immobilize any lateral movement, left or right or up and down or any of that. So again, a micrometer left or, or right, forward and aft, isn't going to change anything as long as it can't move those directions. So. Again, you have four tries. So yeah, you just put them in and do that. For the upper hole, it's a bit trickier. Now this is the anchor boss, I guess you could say. This is the piece that I showed you earlier that pulls out of here. And there it is right there in its natural habitat. It's sitting right there. Well, as it so happens, it has a half inch hole clean through it and it's round. So what you do is you put it on a half inch bolt and periodically cooling it off. Again, let it spin against the angle grinder while grinding itself down until it fits into there. You pound it in, cut it off flush, and you'll be able to bolt that on flush with no wiggle room whatsoever without having to get an extra spindle. See, this is what I got. It kind of goes in, snug, and you just beat it in. Obviously, you would use two hands for it, but it's more or less uniform. Um, like I said, the tiny margin of error that it has is insignificant. The key is to keep movement from happening. And then you just simply cut that off and you'll have it sleeped. At this point, you'll have the 7 16 bolt on, or if it's a Chevelle, your half inch bolt will already be in place, and you'll just use the 5 8 bolt and put the uh, dust shield on. But with a Buick, Oldsmobile, or a Pontiac, and of course different years have different also sized bolts, you'll screw in the half inch grade 8 bolt provided for these lowers, because they provide you with two bolts for each side, so you have four of these. You'll screw it into the top, it's half inch dash 20, and then slice it off, creating a stud. All right, now, once you've installed the caliper bracket itself onto your spindle, and make sure there's no movement, install the dust shield, you pack your bearings, install your inner bearing and your inner bearing seal, and you can go ahead and slide the caliper itself on there then you're going to pack your outer bearing this one's already packed because I've had this kit together and I've actually driven the car so I know it works <clears throat> and you're going to place that piece right there all together and it should rotate freely Now the spindle nuts, see they're tricky. You have to screw them down to where there is no wobble, but to where they're literally, see this, finger tight, no tighter. They can't have any play. That's why you go a little bit more to make sure all the 
bearing grease is squeezed out from the roller contact surface and then you back off to the next one. Um, right behind it. Because if you meet resistance and you go past it, then as the bearing heats up and expands, you'll burn it up. Remember, cotter pins are one-time use only, so use the new one provided with the kit. Fold them over. This one's a little long, so you could tuck it. And if you have a rubber mallet or something, tap on the bearing cap. This acts like the outer seal for your bearings, just as the inner seal acts to keep dirt, sand, and stuff away from your bearings. Because once that happens, you will destroy, you could potentially also destroy your spindle. Now, this is the inner pad. You install the anti-rattle clip right here. What this does is it pushes up on the caliper mount and lets you pull up. The caliper itself installs with two pins. Now, like I said earlier, this kit has these little sleeves in the factory application, but you pull these out for the earlier Chevelles. all your pads and just slide over. Remember to take everything and clean it with brake clean so that you don't have any grease on the rotor because this will cause hot spots. It'll actually kind of sort of heat treat the rotor. On that particular spot and cause all kinds of brake problems. These pins use a 3 8 hex key, the pins that are provided to the kit. The factory pins are a little shorter and those sleeves are used. But these are longer. Make sure to grease them up and to ease them in there and not kink the rubber seals that are inside there. They're not sealing anything. They're just kind of there as a bushing for it to slide freely back and forth. The bleeder nipple, by the way, is 10 millimeters. So if you're looking in your American tool set and 3 8 doesn't fit and neither does 7 16 or 11 30 seconds, that is because the bleeder nipple on this kit is 10 millimeter. All right, so now when your calipers are installed, you install your hose. And the big conversion with this is I went from a single master cylinder to a dual, so you have the three-way brass splitter, which is about $8, $10. And I had to make the downward portion. I was able to reuse some of my hard lines because they were in good shape, but not all of them. And uh, I installed the proportioning valve that's adjustable in the back. Now this will push you over your $300 budget fee but for the extra $45 it costs you, it'll bring you about $320 or so. It will let you shut off the rear brake entirely. And in our case, we installed it in such a way that the brake pedal does not reach it at all in, when fully engaged. But if you were to stop light, you put it in park, you reach down, you could actually adjust the brakes until your back brakes are completely gone allowing your car not to have to fight the rear brake shoes if you were to do a burnout or warm up your tires so that was kind of cool it's a small small little thing speedway sells and uh, i couldn't find it anywhere else so that piece you may have to get through speedway and speedway only but there's any any number of proportioning valves will work for that particular application is just that one had good reviews so I figured I'd give it a try and I like it. So yeah that's all there is to installing disc brakes on your Chevelle, Nova, Firebird, Camaro, what have you. Any of the A, F or X body GM cars that use this kind of spindle 
and you don't have to buy a disc brake spindle unless you really insist on getting the bigger bolts because again Pontiac uses a half inch upper bolt and a half inch lower bolts Buick for some reason of this particular year use half inch upper bolts and 7 16 lowers and all that so all right Michael what do you think of your brakes so I mean if you're going and you push on them <laughs> it actually stops now and you don't have to do some gimmick with the rear parking brake right still need to work on our transmission a bit but I was thinking of just chucking it and putting a turbo 400 in it Got that proportioning valve. I mean, yeah, it works. I bet you if I push down hard enough, I'll actually get them to squeak. <laughs> you actually, yeah, no, don't. I, that's not very soft. <laughs> but uh, all right, so to give you guys a breakdown. There's two holes on the pedal itself: one for power assist and one for manual brakes. The actual push rod on a Skylark. Your mileage may vary, so to speak, you know, make sure to check your car, but on a Skylark, it is adjustable. So what I did is I put it on the second hole, just in case it didn't have thro enough throw for the longer dual dual master cylinder, and uh, it, it made the brakes super, super stiff. Michael didn't like them one bit. I didn't like them. Yeah. It was too much. So what we did is uh, we went back to the non-power brake so it had a little more leverage and uh, just adjusted the push rod accordingly and it works great so now the brakes have a decent feel on the pedal it is a one and one eighth master cylinder so it, they might have a better feel if it was only a one inch but they work good they stop good and as you guys know if we turn off the rear brakes even this 210 horsepower 300 Buick with a two barrel will do a burnout. Lights them up. Smokes them out entirely. You can't even see the car. All right, y'all take care. And we got plenty more work coming up on this car and many other cars. So stay tuned and make sure to subscribe and not miss any cool updates. I'm back here! <laughs>